She is an orthopedic surgeon. And did you know, she told me earlier, that just 6% of all orthopedic surgeons in the United States are women. Just 6%. The good news is that's up from 3% not long ago. Uh, she is a pioneering researcher in mobility and musculoskeletal aging. What she has done is helping transform not just what we think about aging, but how we treat aging. She's the former of Prima. She's the founder of Prima, excuse me, which is the Performance and Research Initiative for Masters Athletes. She's the author of five different books. She's the host of the podcast, Hot for Your Health. She is the go-to expert for almost every major media network. And I think Quinn would be happy to hear this. She's also a former competitive ballroom dancer. She still runs. She'll, she'll put in a half marathon every now and then. And I understand she just completed her first ever Spartan obstacle race at the age of 56. So let's welcome Dr. Vonder Wright. Thank you so much, Mark. Wow, it's a real honor to be here with you tonight. You know, I feel like I know you. We spend quite a bit of time in the villages. And if any of you have ever competed at the National Senior Games, your data might be here tonight. So, you know, I have spent my career, Mark, thinking about how we can age better. What does it mean to live long and prosper? Will I age in the same way that I saw my grandmother who immigrated here from China age? Is that my destiny? Well, you know what, I've spent my entire career thinking about it. What will happen in my own aging, in your own aging? And you know what I've come to believe? I do not believe that we are the victims of the passage of time. I do not believe that you are the victims, the helpless victims of the passage of time. I do not believe that I am the victim of a passage of time. Because you know, two weeks ago I was in Tampa climbing over some stupid obstacle and getting all muddy. I don't know what I was thinking. But I do not believe that I am the victim of the passage of time. So tonight I'm gonna to present to you a little research in the most entertaining way I possibly can. And I'm gonna give you three tips so that you can implement what I've learned from studying people just like you. But I often wonder, where in tarnation did I come up with the belief that we can be healthy, vital, active, joyful, long into the foreseeable future? Where did that come from? Well, you know, I grew up in a time um, maybe like you guys grew up where parents could just take their kids and put them out in the middle of town and say, I'll be back in 30 minutes and you wait right here and it would be just fine, right? So my dad is a lifelong runner and I remember in our little town in Fredonia, Kansas, he would take me to the races and he'd say, stay right here. It's only a 5K, I'm gonna be back in 20 minutes. So I would stay right there and I would cheer him in and we would pet the neighborhood dogs. And then all the racers would come in, but nobody was leaving because everybody kept going like this. And I didn't know what we were looking for, but we kept looking like this. And we would be looking and all of a sudden somebody would say, there she is. Here comes Millie Hartung, she's coming down the road. Millie Hartung was my first example of an elderly person running in a race. And in the 70s, it was such an anomaly that when Millie Hartung finally pulled up past the finish line in Fredonia, Kansas, all the other runners exploded in applause. Well, it was such an anomaly at that time in the 70s. Millie was really only 63. I mean, she had hardly begun living, right? But, you know, it's an example. And as a child, you think, oh, there, Let's just keep on running until we forever, right? Or maybe it came from being a doctor and being able to take care of amazing people like Banana George Blair. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. He was, the story goes, I hope it's true, but the lore is, uh, he was a banker, he retired early, he decided to stay active. He had a house in New York, London, and Cypress Gardens where he was a slalom barefoot skier, right? Wow, at 92. I know. 
Or maybe it's because, I've already mentioned him, right? My own father, Gene Wright, who's here somewhere, I can't see him tonight, who is now 82 years old, has been a lifelong uh, master's athlete, and he was an endurance runner. And he would be gone so long, my mom and I would be like, where is this man? But this is him at 68, running his last marathon. And even though now he has a total hip, I always warn the people in Lake Nona, don't you run over my dad. <laughs> so I have never believed that we are the victim of the passage of time. I have never believed that we have to go from the vitality of youth down some slippery slope to frailty and do nothing about it and die for 20 years. I have never believed that. Maybe it was Millie. Maybe it was Banana George. Maybe it was my own father. I believe we can be healthy, vital, active, joyful, long into the foreseeable future. But I'm a scientist, and I did not want to just take it from the fitness chicks that this is how we could live. So I have spent my whole career investigating ways that we can save mobility, and in doing so, save, our, save us all from the ravages of chronic disease. Because this is what's happening, people. Our life expectancy has increased. In the 1900s, men lived to about 40. We actually don't know how long women live because there was no data kept on us. Men lived to about 40. Now we are marching out and our life expectancy on average is 80. Life expectancy, not our health expectancy. Our health span right now is about 63. That is when the ravages of chronic disease rear their ugly heads. But I'm gonna show you three studies today that will hopefully prove to you and pivot your mindset that you are not destined to go from vitality to frailty. And then I'm gonna give you three tips that just may save your life. How about that? I have so much inspiration every day. Have you ever seen more amazing looking people? If this is not the reason to get up and go to work today, I don't know. These are all my patients. They are healthy, they are vital, they are active, they are joyful. They are not the victims of the passage of time. So, what is the secret sauce? What is the one thing that you take away today to know that you are a powerful force in your own health? Well, I could tell you about the five pillars of health, and if we had three hours and Mark would let you, I would, but I do not. The one thing that can save your life is your lean muscle mass. What? My lean muscle mass? You mean just flexing my biceps, doing a few squats is gonna save my life? Yes, it is. There is nothing more metabolically important from a strength perspective, more important. From a function perspective, more important. All these things that you see here listed are the one that lean muscle mass can give you. And here's the good news. You were born with 650 muscles. And I just want to point out, you may never have seen lean muscle magnified 56,000 times. <laughs> this is what striated lean muscle looks like. It's a picture I took in college because I am just that geeky. I spend my Saturdays under a microscope taking pictures of muscle. So what is the science? What is the science of healthy, vital, active, joyful using muscle? Well, remember I said I study master's athletes? And I, study, I started studying master's athletes at the National Senior Games in 2004. So you may see yourself. So question number one, can we really maintain our lean muscle mass across our lifespan? Well, I'm gonna give you the punchline, yes, you can. If you invest every day, you do not have to be a professional athlete. You can be a mere mortal athlete like me, struggling to get over the stupid obstacles, but we must invest in our mobility every day. And what this slide shows you on this side is what a 40-year-old's thigh looks like, full of muscle, robust, very little fat, not marbled at all, right? It's, it's a flank steak, not a Colby beef, right? In the middle is what happens to us if we sit around for 35 years. We lose our muscle architecture. We build huge rinds of fat. Fat is not just hanging off in inconvenient places. It is a noxious metabolic organ. 
that's throwing off all kinds of chemicals that are gonna kill you. But what happens, my friends, if you do like Quinn or all the other athletes that I take care of and invest every day in your mobility, you get to keep your lean muscle mass. This is the thigh of a 70-year-old triathlete. Very lean, very flank stakeish, very strong, so that this person does not fall down from a standing position and break their hip, right? Number one, can you maintain your lean muscle mass? Yes, you can. Number two, but can we do it deep inside at a cellular level? Stem cells are all the rage. I had a stem cell lab for 20 years at the University of Pittsburgh, and you may have never seen stem cells before. Growing in culture, two cool things I'm showing you tonight, right? These are stem cells, just take a look. You can tell all your friends, I saw stem cells tonight. They were alive in a Petri dish. Doc Wright showed me. We know that we can rejuvenate stem cells, and I'm gonna tell you how. So in my lab, I had these little old lady mice. They were two years old. They were, they were just hanging out on the side of their cages, waiting on their next uh, mouse pellets mouse chow, but we took them and we sampled their stem cells, and we found that the, the poor little mice stem cells were no longer round and fat and happy. They were no longer pouring off growth factors, and in fact, they had programmed themselves to die. But we took these little st mice and we put them on mouse treadmills. I know, can you imagine mouse treadmills? And we ran them twice a week, twice a day for two weeks, and then we resampled their stem cells, and do you know what we found? The cells were fat and happy. They were spilling out growth factors, and they had turned off the mechanisms to death. We know by this experiment, and many others that followed, that we can change the trajectory of our health, not only on a physical level, at tissue level, but at a stem cell level. That is hopeful, my friends. So we live in the most remarkable time to age in the history of people. We are no longer just watching and observing, but we can design precision programs for you and you so that your program is not like yours or not like yours because we are genetically different from the inside out. We can harness the molecular science of aging, we can prescribe precision lifestyle, and we can pivot our attitudes so that we do not believe that we are the victims of progression of time but can pivot to healthy, vital, active, joyful. So how are we gonna do that? Okay, here is your advice, three things only, that you can do, and I hope next time I drive through the villages, I see y'all doing it. Number one, I want you to lift heavy weights. Put down the little Mamby Pamby pink weights, please. <laughs> I want you to lift as heavy as your bones will let you for three to six reps. That's it, it's easy peasy. It really is, it takes all the work out. This is how you build stem cells, this is how you build mitochondria, which are the powerhouses, and this is how you're not gonna fall down from a standing position and break your hip. Number two, I want you to work in 20 jumps a day. You could do it just like this, this works 20 times. You could go up and down stairs, you could jump rope if you want, that will build better bones. Lift heavy and, and jump up and down. You thought it was gonna be hard, didn't you? Not hard. Number two, there is a myth in this country that you have to gut it out and sweat it out in all these boot camps to get really healthy and fit. Not true. Pro athletes spend 80% of their time in base training, which for us as mere mortal athletes is basically a brisk walk, getting our heart rates up 45 to 60 minutes a day, and twice a week you speed it up and sprint a little that gathers a lot of power in our muscles. So that's three things, lift heavy, do plyo, and base train, and sprint a little. I'm gonna give you a bonus. If you wanna stay really, really, really healthy, we want to eliminate sugar spikes. So if you're sugar addicted like me, this is hard, but I've done it and you can do it too. We want a flat glucose curve. Because look at all the benefits. Every health problem that you can think of 
is modified by eliminating refined sugar and eating green leafy and lean protein. This is what, this is, I wear a continuous glucose monitor because I'm just geeky like that and I like the data. This is what a flat glucose curve looks like. This comes from eating one gram of protein per lean body uh, pound a, a day. So for me, it's about 130 grams a day. So you figure out your own math. Those are the four tips. So as we think about it, and we think about my premise that was formed in me as a child that I do not have to get feeble. I can be like Millie Hartung where we're all looking for her and celebrating her victory of crossing the 5K. We can be healthy, vital, active, joyful. I have spent my career understanding that aging from the minute of our conception to the moment of our death is the most natural part of living. And that instead of looking behind our shoulder to our 20s and 30s and 40s and saying, oh, those are the good times, we pivot to now, understanding that there are real science-backed ways that we can live the life we envision. And today I've given you tools so that you understand in the very simple way how to save your mobility and therefore save your own lives. Thank you so much for having me.